So, these stories are a little all over the place. I know I usually have a linear focus when it comes to making these videos, but I thought all of them were interesting enough to include to talk about my beginnings as a K-pop fan. It all started when I was playing MapleStory. <laughs> Someone was typing out the lyrics, I want nobody, nobody, but you. And I'm like, why are you saying nobody twice? Is that a song? So she linked me the video, and right off the bat, I was pretty hooked. Honestly, foreign language has always been very captivating for me. I took a huge interest into Asian cultures and even took Japanese for like four years. I love you, Japanese. Totally not aviable. I mean, I could probably relate to everyone who was into weeby and anime things and then slowly got into Karibi and K-pop things, and now I have a huge love for both. My friends started getting into it too, and soon enough they linked me to clips of Girls' Generation, and after watching G, Let's just say I owned three pairs of colored jeans that year. <laughs> I even remember learning the whole dance for one of my friends. Her birthday was coming up at the time and she was feeling pretty down. So I thought I'd learn the dance and do it horribly in order to cheer her up. Oh God. Oh man. Yeah, I don't know why that footage hasn't been burned yet. I also recall, like, when I was learning, my dad walked in on me. And I think he was watching me for at least a good three minutes until he stopped me and said, Wow, you're pretty elegant when you do that. Um, yeah. So, in high school, you know how a lot of kids would bring loudspeakers to school and put them in their backpack? Yeah, I played K-pop on mine. <laughs> My friends and I were so Karib. Karib, is that even a word? I don't know. Okay, it's a word now. We played Big Bang's Haru Haru in the middle of the quad, and we reenacted the fight scene. You know, the... K-pop influenced our lives. It shaped our hairstyles, our fashion statements, our jokes. We'd even secretly do the dances under our desks during class. Um. Who just did that? I was lucky to have friends who also enjoyed it. And so one day I stumbled upon a video of a live performance that I've never seen before. And this group was Kara. I watched it and I I don't know what came over me. I just went extreme stalker mode. I learned everything about the songs, the members, the dances. After a month, I don't know how much kata memorabilia I accumulated over that period of time, but I pretty much went full Koreaboo for them. I even ordered custom skins for my 3DS. I named my first guitar Nicole. <laughs> And to top it all off, I even had a messenger bag custom embroidered with the Korean letters KARA on it. That was so expensive, I could have bought a new Xbox, but no, I wanted the KARA messenger bag. Like, y'all know how obsessed I am with Boom Boom, right? For KARA, it was like every single song. And if anybody told me otherwise or that they were bad, I would treat them like actual fighting words. They're my ultimate group. And if you don't recognize Choo Chan, well, Sarah, calm down. Because I know how it feels to be a fan of a group that you absolutely love from the bottom of your soul, I can say that I'm more aware of how a distasteful joke will not fly well in the K-pop community. I always try to say, okay, if I made this same iffy joke, but I made it about a group, and someone had the same amount of fanaticism as mine for Kata, yeah, okay, I'd probably kill them. And I know they're disbanded now, and it did devastate me when they did. Okay, it still devastates me. But I'm glad for all the happiness they still continue to bring me. Back then, I always fell into this rut of being embarrassed to like K-pop. But nowadays, I mean, look at my channel. Does it look like I care? 